Thank you so much. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. What an honor and privilege to be here with you all tonight. You all doing all right? Yes. I'm going to ask you to give a hand to Benny and Crystal one more time because this is a phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal enterprise. I am so honored to have been invited to come say a few words to you, and I promise I'll be brief. I want to say really just three things to you tonight. Um, first of all, Crystal kind of stole my thunder. Um, because as I was squawking in here tonight, um, I started thinking about what is it as an entrepreneur, if I had someone say something to me 25, 30 years ago, um, when I started a small business, when my wife started her business, entertainment business, um, what would be the most valuable thing someone could have said to me? Or to her, or to us. And Crystal said it first uh, tonight, and I hope that uh, we can put a pin on it, kind of like a bookmark, uh, to think about it. Because I say this to groups all the time, particularly young entrepreneurs. One is, the reality is that very few of us, only 1% of the entire society, become independently wealthy, 1%. So the question becomes, what is the other most valuable asset the rest of us can acquire and leverage to begin to grow and to really reach our dreams? And Crystal went right to the heart of it, our relationships, our networks. The most important thing when you started your business, what did you turn to? The networks, your relationships. I share with you a story while in San Francisco about five years ago. Mary Hick, Governor Hickenlooper and I went to San Francisco to steal businesses to bring them to Denver. And we walked into this one place called Plug and Play. And in this Plug and Play, it was kind of like a, um, what we have here, kind of an incubator, right? Kind of a place where small businesses set up, our industry galvanized, uh, you know, Calamus 621 or whatever they call it. Um, set up, these small businesses set up and kind of learn from each other, kind of drive off one another. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking in this guy's building. He had dozens of companies. And he had all these brands up there. PayPal got started there. Um, I'm sitting there going, these are, these are like Fortune 500 companies today, man. He said, yeah. I said, so what's your requirement when you bring these companies in? He said, listen, you can come into my incubator. All you need to do is have the willingness to fight for your company, have a great idea, and you gotta have at least one or two friends who will invest in your business. And I said, one or two friends? He said, yeah, because if you can't have, if you don't have a friend who invests in your business, you probably shouldn't be in business. <laughs> you think about that for a minute, right? So the prerequisite was you must have at least one friend who's not in your current investor who will invest to say, I'll invest in the business coming in. So that's the first thing, is to leverage your network and your relationships. I know you all know that. But let me share you with something that I have always admired about people who are successful. And you may not like the term I'm gonna use, but it's real. I call it the bubble guts. When my son was young, if he had an upset stomach, he always say to me, Daddy, I have the bubble guts. And, and, and this is about something that I learned from a very successful man who had failed in business numerous times. And when I asked him, what is it that kept you going? What made you pick yourself up and do it again? He said, man, it was something in my stomach. I just couldn't stop. And I said, oh, you mean the bubble guts? He said, yeah. It's that thing that you're so suffocated by the desire to get it done that you will do anything to get there. How many of you have ever been there before? How many of you have that idea right now that's driving your business? It's the bubble guts. It's the, it's the culmination of the story that I heard about the young woman who wanted to know the secret to success. And she traveled around the villages asking everyone she could find What's the secret? And no one could tell her until she ran into someone who said, go talk to the, the queen of the village and she will tell you the secret to success. 
And so she off she went and she got the queen sitting on her rickety rocking chair. And the queen, in her very crouchy way, said, what is it you want? She said, well, the people in the village tell me you have the secret to success. Without saying the word, the queen led her into the river. And they walked in the water. And the further they went into the water, the further submerged they became underneath the water until they were completely under the water. Then the queen led her out of the water and walked her back up to her old porch and sat back on her rickety chair. Without saying a word for a minute, the old young lady was incensed and she stopped and she asked the queen, my God, what was that about? You made me all wet, you messed up my hair. The queen looked at her and just simply said, young lady, when you were underwater, what is it you wanted the most? To which the young lady replied, why, you old fool, I wanted to breathe. That's what you want to do. The queen just very wryly responded. Young lady, when you want success as badly as you wanted to breathe, you would have found the secret. The bubble guts. <laughs> so suffocated by it, I got to breathe. I got, I can't, I got to fight to get there. And I think, having been an entrepreneur, having watched my wife build her entertainment business and brand, the thing that drives us the most was the, the sense of, I gotta breathe, I'm trying to get up and above water. So I, I come today so I kinda understand what you're talking about, what you're dealing with every day, what you're sitting here thinking about in your mind, I have an idea, I have a brand, I have a business, and I, I wanna breathe, I wanna get my head above the water. And leveraging your networks and, of course, being smart with your resources is what's going to have to get there. But your passion and a sense of desire to breathe is what's going to drive you where you're going to go. The reason why I can say this to you is because not that my business was phenomenally successful. It wasn't. But it's the same, that drove, same thing that drove me to be successful in politics. The sense of wanting to do something. The ideal of how we can be better. And that passion and desire to breathe. I'll close with just telling you this third thing. The city of Denver today is experiencing the greatest economic resurgence the city has ever experienced in its lifetime. Over the next 15 to 20 years, this city is going to, just the city, engage in some five to six billion dollars worth of expenditure. Capital projects, service and programs, five billion dollars of new money entering into this market. And as a person of color who has made a commitment to women and minorities growing, I want you to know that there will not be a window or door open larger for women and minority businesses to thrive than the era in which we're living today. And what a shame it will be if we don't take advantage of it to make sure that we create a few successful women and minority businesses during this era. The only requirement is that when that door is open, you walk in. Prepared, hit the ground running and compete. And we're going to make sure we lift up and give opportunity to our women businesses in this city. And the only other requirement I ask of you is to bring someone along with you to the legacy of those who have a head start is that they've been able to pass the baton and to build. Now it's your turn. And then it's your turn. And then it's your turn. So think about who you're mentoring, who you're bringing along, so that when you've made it, you can look back and say, that's my legacy, because there's no greater legacy. Not money, not buildings, not stock. No greater legacy than the human legacy that you've brought along and you've created opportunities for those who follow you. So I wish you all the best of luck. I hope you have bubble guts for not too long. Because <laughs> the moment you can breathe, they go away. But build on your network and bring someone along as you experience the opportunities. And look at the city for the opportunities for your business and for your opportunities going forward. Okay? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.